This is an incredible true story sent in by one of our viewers, Todd, that we could not help but share with you all. Thank you, Todd, for sending this in and allowing us to share it with the audience. This is a really creepy one, so we advise you all, hit the lights, sit back, and enjoy. Between 1989 and 1994, Todd worked on the ramp for Delta Airlines at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. During his time there, he worked on the haunted L-1011 aircraft that used spare parts from Eastern Airlines Flight 401 that crashed on December 29th, 1972. Just a bit of background on that crash, Flight 401 was a scheduled flight from JFK, New York to Miami. The crash happened after the cockpit crew were preoccupied with a burnt out landing gear indicator light and failed to notice that the autopilot had inadvertently been disconnected. As a result, the aircraft gradually lost altitude and crashed into the Florida Everglades. Of the 176 passengers and crew aboard, 101 lost their lives. In the aftermath of the crash, parts of the crashed aircraft were salvaged and refitted into other AL-1011s. In the months and years following the crash, numerous stories began circulating about sightings of dead crew members sitting on board these aircraft. And here we have a first-hand account from Todd, who worked on one of those AL-1011s. Todd's first experience was when he was assigned to load the front bin. AL-1011s are wide-body aircraft with cargo loaded into large pods or cans, which are then placed on can loaders. Todd had just loaded two cans in the front bin, locked them down, and waited for some empty cans to be brought around. He was standing near the lower galley, close to an elevator that flight attendants often use to get from the upper gallery to the lower galley, before passengers boarded. As usual, Todd noticed a flight attendant and waved to her. She waved back and continued with her work. At first glance, Todd thought she was wearing a Delta uniform that was very similar to the defunct Eastern Airlines uniform. Todd finished loading the cans and locked up the bin, and took the associated paperwork up to the captain. But when he got there, he noticed the first class flight attendant was not the same woman he saw on the elevator. So he asked her if anyone had been in the lower galley. She said no one had been down there. When he told her what he'd seen, she just smiled and said, Oh, that's just one of the ghosts. It happens all the time. Don't worry about it. After that, Todd saw the same woman multiple times, but was a little more aware and realized she was in fact wearing the defunct Eastern Airlines uniform. Another experience was when Todd was loading baggage in the bulk bin. The bulk bin on an AL-1011 is at the very rear of the aircraft, and the old belt loaders would have to be at a pretty steep angle and barely reached, so the loaders were a good way off the ground. There was a heavy downpour that day, so it wasn't unusual for ramp personnel and crew to walk under the aircraft to keep dry. However, on this day, Todd saw crew members walking through the rain like it was no big deal, before placing their crew bags on the belt and walking away. Todd grabbed the bags and set them forward to be unloaded first, then prepared to lock up. But just before stepping out, he noticed Eastern Airlines bag tags on the crew bags. It wasn't unusual for old bag tags to be on bags, but as Easton had been defunct for some time, it was uncommon for a crew bag to have those tags still attached. Realizing this was out of the ordinary, Todd went to the cockpit and asked the captain if there was a deadhead crew, a crew that are officially on duty but not part of the working crew. He said no. So Todd told him about the crew bags. He laughed and said, that's probably just the ghosts, although this is the first time I've heard about them running around on the ramp. Todd messaged ahead to the destination airport to ask them to look out for the bags, but was informed upon arrival that there were no crew bags in the bulk bin. On another occasion, Todd's shift was 4am to noon, and during this particular schedule, the haunted AL-1011 would terminate the night before, and then staff would prepare the plane for a 6am departure the next day. Todd remembers catering showing up early, and they needed someone to go up and open the front door, so he ran up and popped the door. As he was leaving, he looked down the aisle and noticed a flight attendant near the aircraft's rear. He knew for a fact the crew hadn't shown up yet, and by this time, he knew all about the ghosts. So it was a little unnerving to actually see and realize that it was probably a ghost. At that moment, the catering lift truck bumped the aircraft, slightly causing Todd to avert his gaze momentarily. When he looked back down the aisle, the flight attendant was only a few feet away. 
He was so startled that he jumped and stumbled back before quickly exiting the aircraft. The guys on the gate noticed that he was white as a sheet, and one of them said to him, they're harmless, so get used to them. It was a kind of running joke with the staff, and new maintenance personnel would get spooked when they were asked to work on the haunted AL-1011, and sometimes the cockpit crew would get the new guy to check the avionics down in the hell hole. Not knowing what to expect, the new guys would start their checks and often ask the captain or co-worker, what's that smell? It's like cologne or aftershave. At which point they would be informed about the flight engineer on 401, who was in the hell hole on impact, and it was his aftershave that was said to linger in that area. Over the years, Todd worked on the AL-1011, he would see multiple things he couldn't explain, such as glimpses of a captain and first officer in Eastern Airlines uniforms, passengers waving to him when he knew the aircraft was empty, although he never smelt the infamous cologne of the flight engineer, despite going in the hell hole to try and experience it. This is a really creepy story, and we'd like to thank you, Todd, for sharing it with us. It's fascinating to hear what you experienced working on the haunted aircraft. And if anyone else has any similar stories, please let us know. Thanks again, Todd, and we'll see you all tomorrow for another creepy video.